is every NFL team's worst free agency signing of all time. Shit happens, we all make mistakes. You may stub your toe, forget a close relative or friend's birthday. Maybe you accidentally cut someone off on traffic and they give you the bird. Or maybe you spend millions of dollars to bring in a star player that never pans out. See, not all mistakes are the same size, so we're also going to list the NFL franchise's biggest free agency mishaps from bad to worst. At the end of the video, I will reveal the worst NFL free agency signing ever. But first, hi, nice to meet you. I'm NFL Mike, an NFL content creator and NFL historian, and I follow football all day, every day. 24 hours, seven days a week, and twice on Sundays. So if you're an NFL fan, I know you will love the channel. Please, before you forget, subscribe, turn on notifications, and make sure you like the video so that the algorithm knows to send this video out to more NFL fans like me and yo. We're trying to get 10,000 subs and every sub counts, even if you disagree with my opinions. All right, starting with the AFC. The least terrible signing in the AFC. The least terrible signing? What does that even mean? It's gonna be the New England Patriots signing Antonio Brown. This is a terrible move, but the reason I'm bringing it up first is because really no harm was done to the New England Patriots. Except they ended up paying Antonio Brown $9 million guaranteed to catch four passes while on the team. They'd release Antonio Brown, and of course he would go to Tampa and win a Super Bowl, so it worked out for everybody. Next is gonna be one of the Tennessee Titans went out and signed running back Deion Lewis in 2019. At the time, this made a lot of sense because the Titans already had Derrick Henry, and Lewis was looked at as one of the best receiving backs in the NFL. Lewis signed a four-year, $20 million contract with the team, ended up only playing two years, and hardly really ever saw the field. He would leave Tennessee, and just a few years later, the Titans would find Tajay Spears, so be happy, Tennessee fans. The Pittsburgh Steelers move on tight end Eric Ebron made the list, but not too far down on the rankings, because they signed Ebron to a small, two-year, $12 million deal. And just like Deion Lewis, this free agency signing actually led the Steelers in the direction that they needed to go anyways. Because in 2021, Ebron will be beat out for the starting job as the starting tight end of the Pittsburgh Steelers by Pat Fryermuth. Bringing me to Antonio Camardi signing to become an Indianapolis Colt. This one's another one that didn't really have a huge impact on franchise history. That's kind of the scale I use to rank these. If you guys use a different scale, feel free to comment how you feel these should have been ranked. We all agree that these were terrible free agent moves regardless of where they're ranked. Marty started with the Chargers where he was immediately an all-pro level cornerback, landing him a huge deal with the Jets. After his Jets contract, he would sign a one-year deal with the Indianapolis Colts and only play four games before being released mid-season. And that ended Antonio Camardi's career. Camardi to this day claims that the Colts cut him because he kneeled for the national anthem. Jim Irsay, if you're watching this video, let us know in the comments, did you? Say it with your chest, buddy, if you did. Next is the Buffalo Bills' worst signing in free agency history. And I'm actually going with Vaughn Miller for this pick just because of how massive his contract is and how he hasn't done a damn thing on the team yet. Von Miller signed a six-year, $120 million contract to become a Buffalo Bill a few years ago. And due to a knee injury, he's only played 24 games as a Bill. He has eight total sacks. I believe only one since his first season on the team when he originally got hurt. Buffalo can still salvage this if Von Miller gets healthier and is a beast again next year. But as of right now, this is their worst free agent signing in their franchise's history. Bringing me to the defending champs, the Kansas City Chiefs. It was pretty hard to find a player to reference for the Chiefs because they tend to sign good free agents. But I'm going with another active player. Their current left tackle, Jawan Taylor. He has some big shoes to fill when OBJ went to Cincinnati. So no one expected him to be elite, but the Chiefs signed him to a four-year, $80 million contract instead of paying for OBJ. He was the most penalized player in the entire NFL last year, and I think he's the only weakness in the entire Chiefs roster. <laughs> Unless there's a great turnaround when teams attack him now next season, this may go down as the worst signing in Chiefs history. From a team that usually lands all of their free agent signings, to a team that never does. Cleveland Brown's worst signing of all time is Jeff Garcia, just because of the hope it brought to the team. Garcia was successful as a San Francisco 49er. Not as successful as predecessors Steve Young and Joe Montana, but looks like a franchise Pro Bowl quarterback. But when he went to Cleveland, he fell off a fucking cliff, as it seems everyone does. The Browns thought they were getting a franchise quarterback when he inked his four-year contract. He would be benched by the 10th game after going 3-7 and seven and only last one season on the roster. The Miami Dolphins' worst free agency signing happened recently as well when they signed cornerback Byron Jones. Now, Byron Jones wasn't terrible. Just when the Dolphins signed him, he was one of the best cornerbacks on the market. So he got a massive five-year, $82.5 million contract. When you pay someone that much, you expect to be getting a shutdown corner, and that's what the Dolphins thought they were getting with Byron Jones. Like I said, Jones wasn't bad as a Dolphin. But he got paid. He got paid more than the highest paid corner at the time, which was Xavier Howard, also on the Dolphins. 
I'm going tackle for the Denver Broncos. Worst free agency signing ever also. Just like KC, they brought in Juwan James to solidify their pass protection. And give Drew Locke a real chance in the NFL because he had been playing behind one of the worst lines in football. But despite signing James to a four-year, $52 million contract, he'd only play three games as a Bronco. He got injured his first year with the team. Then in 2020, opted out because of the COVID pandemic. I'm not judging him for opting out. I don't know what his health concerns were at the time or maybe family members. But by the time we got to 2021, James was three years into his deal and he'd hardly hit the field. 2021 was going to be the year that the signing finally pays off. Until James ruptured his Achilles in practice. Once he healed up, he left Denver and went to the Baltimore Ravens. Tore his Achilles again, ending his career. Next, let's talk about the Las Vegas Raiders' worst free agency signing ever. Cornerback D'Angelo Hall. You see, the last Raiders' really good first-round draft pick, Nomni Asamoah, became an all-pro corner almost immediately when he got to the league. So the Raiders said, you know what's probably going to make this defense shut down? Is if we had another elite corner. D'Angelo Hall was having a contract dispute with his original team, the Atlanta Falcons. So the Raiders said, send him our way. This is the only free agency signing that includes draft picks. They traded for D'Angelo Hall and signed him to a seven-year, $70 million contract. At week eight, the Raiders had to eat that contract and release D'Angelo Hall because of schematic issues. I bet the coaches didn't like him very much. This was like the J.C. Jackson signing of the 2000s. The Cincinnati Bengals go below the Raiders for worst free agency move in NFL history because they did the same move in two consecutive seasons. In 2009, the Cincinnati Bengals signed free agent wide receiver Lenevarius Coles. I tried my best to say it. You got to give me credit for that. He was a solid receiver, but for some reason, the Bengals gave him a four-year, $30 million contract, which at the time was bonkers. A similar size contract to what we see DK Metcalf playing on right now if you put it to scale in today's cap space. And obviously, Coles was awful. I don't even know how to say the guy's name. But then in 2010, the Bengals were like, that didn't work. Let's try it again. And went and signed wide receiver Antonio Bryant to another four-year, 30-plus million dollar deal. But apparently, when Bryant got to practice, he completely fell apart and lost his mind and would be released before week one of his first season on the team. The Baltimore Ravens are another team that rarely makes any mistakes. They land free agent after free agent, draft pick after draft pick. But when John Harbaugh called up Pete Carroll and said, hey, should I sign Earl Thomas? And Pete Carroll told John Harbaugh, no, do not sign Earl Thomas. He might end up flipping you off on the way off the field. John probably should have listened to him. They signed safety Earl Thomas to a four-year, $55 million contract? Couldn't even believe what I was reading. And he only lasted one season in Baltimore because he decided to punch out a teammate in the locker room and never returned to the NFL again from there. An elite safety in the prime of his career out of the NFL like that. And next, you're probably surprised they're gonna call me biased because this is not the worst free agency signing in NFL history is my Los Angeles Chargers with their recent JC Jackson acquisition four-year 82 million dollar contract to join the Brandon Staley defense and was looked at as the missing piece of the defense a shutdown corner is what they needed more than anything at the time JC would miss the first four games with an ankle injury he suffered in training camp finally get on the field and get absolutely cooked for five straight weeks rupture his patellar tendon in half if you're wondering what the patellar tendon is, you never hear about it because it's really hard to rupture. It's the tendon that holds your whole knee together. It's way harder to injure than your ACL, MCL, or PCL. JC Rehabbed anyways got back to the Chargers and was graded the worst corner of all time according to PFF in his games with the Chargers in 2023. So they sent him back to the Patriots for nothing, said please take him back. We're getting closer to the end, but we're not there yet because the Houston Texans made a worse signing than that. Because in 2016, despite Brock Osweiler only had playing seven games with Denver the year before, I guess the Texans thought they'd seen enough. Desperate for a quarterback, they signed him to a four-year, $72 million contract. I think we all know how this story ends. They should have done better scouting. But the Jaguars got even worse than that when they signed Nick Foles in 2019. You're probably thinking, Mike, Nick Foles is a damn hero. How could anyone ever dislike Nick Foles or dislike a Nick Foles signing? I think you should ask Jacksonville Jaguars fans if Nick Foles is their hero. Because following his Super Bowl magic, the Jaguars signed him to a $92 million deal with $50 million guaranteed. Foles broke his collarbone in year two and then got beat out for the starting job by Garner Minshew the next season. So he only ended up playing Four games as a Jaguar total. And the Jags are still looking for that Philly special magic to this day, ironically. We reached the end of the AFC. I'm about to give you the worst free agency signing in AFC history. But first, one last reminder, make sure you've liked the video already and subscribe to the channel with that notification bell on. I know 95% of people are not subscribed to the channel, so I'm starting to plug it a ton. Please subscribe. The worst free agency signing in the history of the AFC is when the New York Jets signed Le'Veon Bell for multiple reasons. For one, at the time, running backs were not getting $50 million 
million dollar contracts. So Le'Veon Bell holding out of Pittsburgh and forcing his way to New York to get this record breaking deal literally broke the running back market and scared NFL franchises forever to never sign a running back again. Not to mention, it ruined the trio in Pittsburgh that was dominating the league back then. This is one of the best offenses to not win a championship ever. Ruined his own damn potentially Hall of Fame career. And on top of it all, the reason he's number one on the list for the worst free agency signing in AFC history, he ruined a Jets team that was on the come up at the time. Should have stayed in Pittsburgh, Le'Veon. That's coming from a huge Le'Veon Bell boxing fan now. All right, moving on to the NFC's worst free agencies of all time next. We did the AFC yesterday. I'll tell you how you can get to that video at the end of this video also. The Seattle Seahawks are coming first on the list, signing Eddie Lacy. The reason this isn't further down in the rankings is simply because it didn't really have any impact on the Seattle Seahawks other than the one season. They signed Eddie to a one-year deal worth up to around seven, eight million dollars. They only ended up playing nine games, had 180 yards rushing. There were red flags in this signing from the get-go. The Seahawks famously had to put clauses in Eddie Lacy's contract to keep him below a certain weight, and he still broke the contract and went over that weight. If you need to ask a player to lose weight to play on your football team, maybe don't sign him. Speaking of guys that should have never been signed, the Packers should have never signed Martellus Bennett. Unfortunately, Jermichael Finley's career ended early due to injury, leading the Packers to signing Bennett to a three-year, $21 million deal. Unfortunately, Bennett was a disaster. Only played in seven games. He caught 24 passes while a Packer. I had to do some digging to find the Atlanta Falcons' worst free agency signing of all time. The conclusion I came to was when they signed edge rusher Ray Edwards. A lot of people don't know about Edwards, but I believe he had back-to-back -back eight sack seasons in 09 and 2010. Leads him leaving the Vikings and signing a huge deal with the Falcons. Just to be out of the league in two seasons to go and pursue his boxing career. I guess he did go 12 and one, so I guess this decision was better than the Falcons' decision to sign him. Speaking of the Minnesota Vikings, their worst free agency signing of all time is Fred Schmoot. The second round pick for the Redskins in 2001, they didn't really play that great for Washington, so when he hit the market, it was shocking when the Vikings signed him. They gave him a six year, $34 million contract. He did end up playing for two seasons in Minnesota and start every game, but was released, only getting two interceptions in those 24 or 25 games. The Lions' worst signing ever is also a tight end. Same as their NFC North brothers and they went out and got tight end Jesse James send a massive four-year 25 million dollar contract but would only end up catching 30 total passes while a lion didn't end up being the elite run blocker that he was for the Steelers uh, Bears have been looking for a quarterback forever they've signed plenty of terrible ones I had a hard time choosing, but I ended up going with Mike Glennon because he gave him a three-year 45 million dollar payday this to be benched for Mitchell Trubisky after four starts if you got a boring ass name like Derek Anderson, you're not gonna be a star on the NFL and I wish the Arizona Cardinals realized that before they signed him. He ended up 16 and 18 as a starter despite Cardinals fans having so much hope in Anderson, ending up being benched in his final season after a two and seven start. The Dallas Cowboys actually have been pretty good in free agency over the years. And they took a huge risk on Greg Hardy, signed him to a one year $11.3 million deal. It's like one of the only free agency signings that hasn't worked out for the Cowboys. For the Saints, I ended up going with Brendan Browner as their worst signing in free agency history. The corner was excellent, a bruiser with the Seattle Seahawks, a key member of the LOB. Then went to New England and continued to win Super Bowls with them, leading to him signing a three-year, $15 million deal with the Saints, where he fell off a cliff and was terrible. The LA Rams' worst signing ever happened recently when they signed wide receiver Allen Robinson. After the Rams won the Super Bowl in 2020, 2021 was not so hot. But when they came back in 2022, they brought a super offense together. They had Cooper Cup, Van Jefferson, and then brought in Allen Robinson. But unfortunately, just like Allen Robinson was struggling in Chicago, he continued to struggle, fooling all of us fantasy owners in LA. And the three-year, $46 million contract the Rams signed him to was flushed when he was traded to the Steelers the next offseason. Tampa Bay Buccaneers' worst free agency signing of all time is Tom Brady. I'm just kidding. Maybe that's their best. Like the video if you want to see the best free agency signings ever. If we get this to 50 likes, I will make a whole separate video on that topic. But the real worst free agency signing in Tampa Bay Buccaneers history is defensive tackle Chris Baker. They signed him to a three-year $15 million deal, but he was just terrible, man. Crazy enough is that the year he signed to the Buccaneers, the Buccaneers were being featured on Hard Knocks. So they caught on camera Baker being a terrible teammate. Lazy. And Gerald McCoy and Levante David pulling their fucking hair out because they couldn't get this guy on the right track. He was released after just one season with the Bucks. The Panthers' worst free agency signing of all time by far is Sean Gilbert. And the Eagles thought they were getting an all-pro when they signed nominee Osamoa in 2011. Osamoa was coming off three straight Pro Bowl seasons with the Raiders and was an all-pro as well. And once he signed his five-year, $60 million deal, this Eagles team was so good, they were calling it the Dream Team. They are comparing the Eagles to one of the most historic basketball teams in the history of human life. Yet, we all know what happened. They absolutely fell apart. And Nomni 
Oswald did not work out. For the first time ever, I'm just going to say he should have stayed a Raider. But their division rivals did worse on the other side of the ball when they signed wide receiver Kenny Galladay. Galladay got four years, 72 million, yet only ended up catching 43 passes as a Giant before he was released. And I believe zero touchdowns. 49ers had the second worst free agency signing ever. And they signed running back Lawrence Phillips. This dude was a beast in college, which is why the 49ers felt like they could find whatever he had in the NCAA when they signed him. This is the second worst free agency signing ever because this is the person that missed the block that ended Steve Young's career. So that alone already makes it one of the worst free agency signings ever. And then also this guy went on to be a terrible running back and terrible person. He ended up being sentenced, I think, to like 25 years in prison because he had too many assault charges against mostly women. A few years into his sentence in 2015, he'd actually kill one of his cellmates before dying himself in prison in 2016. You're probably thinking, there was a worse free agency signing than that? <laughs> yes, when the Washington Commanders, back then the Redskins, signed Albert Hainsworth. If you know anything about free agency signing history, you already probably knew when the video started that this is the worst one in NFL history. I made the AFC video and dropped it a few days ago. I won't spoil which signing it was that was the worst ever in the AFC, but this is still way worse than that one too signed a seven-year, $100 million contract with the best defensive tackle in football right before we get into the Aaron Donald era. His first year, he was unproductive and was constantly complaining about his own coaches to the media. That's so bad that the Washington Commanders had to just give up on him and trade him to Bill Belichick and the Patriots in 2011. Spoiler, that didn't work out either. That is the worst free agency signings in the NFC of all time. You guys want to see the best free agency signings in league history? Please like this video. Once it gets to 50 likes, I will drop those videos as well. Will we see any free agency signings this year worse than any of these? Yeah, sooner rather than later, the ball definitely won't lie. Things worth your thief.